Good afternoon, Covenant Presbyterian Church, family, friends, and visitors to this daily devotional for March 23rd, 2020. I hope this daily devotional video finds you well. I hope it finds you finding a sense of routine and ritual in these days. I hope that you have uh, begun to figure out what it means to uh, structure your days. Um, I've had conversations with colleagues and parishioners and friends about what it means to be busy during this time, what it means to be productive and successful. A colleague shared with me a story from uh, one of her church members about uh, her church member had come to her and said, I'm doing a puzzle, but it doesn't feel very productive. Uh, and I think that's what culture has taught us, that we have to be productive and see a, a long list of outcomes to deem it successful or to deem ourselves worthy of, of, that, of what we were doing. And I think COVID-19 is teaching us that busyness and production and successfulness looks vastly different than we ever thought it might, uh, especially in God's creation. And uh, nowhere in the Bible does it say uh, God was creating humans for busyness or production or successfulness. No, God created humans for relationships and companionship and delight. And I think COVID-19 is asking us for a hard reset on what we find as busyness and production and successfulness. Because I think we, uh, we find comfort in busyness. We find our worth in busyness. We find our self-esteem in busyness. If I can make you happy, then maybe I'll be happy. Uh, or if I make a lot of money, maybe I'll be happy. Those kinds of uh, things. The, the struggle in these times, however, with that busyness is, uh, it looks vastly different than we've ever known it to look like. Uh, you can still be busy in this time, but it may not feel worthy enough uh, in, in what we have trained our our society and our minds to think it should look like. So we're having a, a hard reset moment and that is jarring for a lot of us. Uh, it's causing what I call decision fatigue along with others because you're making so many decisions um, in such a short amount of time that you would rather not make any decisions. So the pendulum swings the, the opposite way. So what I'm hoping is that if you are struggling with sense of worth and you're not being busy enough or productive or successful enough or that if you're suffering from making too many decisions too, too quickly that you can uh, realize that God did not ask you, uh, did not create you to do any of that. Uh, God created you to simply be. And that's hard for us because it goes against everything that our society and culture uh, tell us to, to do. And so that may be um, jarring for a lot of us. I know it's jarring for myself. Um, I tried to overwork myself last week because I thought I have to have some sense of, of worth in, you know, for the church that's still paying me and, and taking care of my family and, and trying to lead spiritually. And really God was simply saying, you know, reevaluate everything. What what's of most importance? And that's really what I want you to delight in. And when I sat down and thought about this, thought about that this weekend, um, I was actually astonished that uh, the things I cherish are the smaller things. Uh, nowhere did I say, "Gosh, I I hate I missed that meeting," or "Gosh, I hate that I wasn't able to do this or that." I really you know, lamented not being able to see people I know and love and, and cherish. Those were the things I missed the most. Um, the other conveniences are nice, but I miss, I miss my people connection more than ever. And so in that, if you're suffering from the de decision fatigue or busyness or self-worth uh, moments, I, I want you to know and hear you're not alone in that. There's many of us doing that. And it's okay to figure out um, that a puzzle is productive in the eyes of God. Maybe not in our society, but in the eyes of God, your mind and your heart are centered on creating uh, a beautiful puzzle and putting it together. That's productive. Um, and that is enough in these times. So I hope you hear that. 
and I hope you can um, find that sense of calm and peace of uh, being being worthy enough by just taking a breath on this earth. Uh, that's that's all we're called to do at this moment. I'm going to light a candle for our devotional time, and. Um, Reminding ourselves that this is Christ's hope and love and peace in the darkness uh, in these days. I invite you to light a candle in your home as well. Um, and hopefully for the rest of our devotionals this week, we'll have other members of the community and friends and family uh, covenant be able to provide scripture and song again for us like we did last week. But I'm going to ask you to turn to the Psalms once more uh, where we find our lament, our comfort, our joy, and our uh, uneasiness, if you will. And I'm going to ask you to turn to Psalm 130. Um, it's, it's a psalm of ascent. It's a psalm that you want to, um, you want to cry with, but you also want to rejoice with. And, uh, and really, it's a psalm that says, uh, Who's, who's really in charge of making decisions right now? Uh, and I hope that this can bring you some comfort. May God's living word reach all of us today. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love. And with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all of their sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you can see, it's a psalm of lament. You know, we're crying out to God, Lord, how long will this last? How long, O Lord, that we will be in this time of exile and trial? Uh, how long will, will we watch others uh, endure suffering? And then uh, a sense of comfort that uh, we wait in the Lord, that our waiting is not in vain, that it is um, possible to wait for the Lord and put our hope there, that God can participate with us continually to battle uh, the, the coronavirus. And so we put our hope in the Lord, for the Lord has unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. And that's what I hope. Uh, that is my hope, that's my prayer, that families can be reunited, that we can return to one another in full, uh, in full measure. And with that gives me, gives me great hope. Uh, and so my hope is that the Lord will, will manifest that, will create that, and give us that sense. While I lament, I am, I'm hopeful, and I hope you are too hopeful that it doesn't all rely on our shoulders, that God is participating in this and, and giving, giving us redemption, and, and I'm grateful. Uh, I fear that if that wasn't the case, that uh, life would be so much harder to bear than it already is. And so I hope that we can find comfort in Psalm 130 that um, God, is, God is just as busy as we are working on on this world and in our redemption uh, in and through it and so that brings us comfort I hope this day with that we had some prayer requests from our uh, Sunday morning worship uh, live feed and I want to lift those up and I invite you to send in your prayer requests so that we can pray for them on our daily devotional videos and on Sunday mornings worship so at the bottom of your screen right now is my email, pastor at cpcsherman.org. Email me your prayer requests, whether they are a joy or a concern, and check in, and we will uh, pray for those who are on your hearts uh, tomorrow morning. So with that, Linnea asked that we pray for her uh, kids and families who she teaches, 
and uh, the upheaval of their lives at the moment. Kathy asked that we pray for those in nursing homes and families who fear because they can't see those uh, loved ones in the nursing home. And a uh, different Kathy asked that we pray for those struggling with loneliness and fear, and we will pray for all of those today. I also say we uh, pray for those who feel they are not worthy in these times, that the work they're doing is not enough, that it's not productive or successful in their eyes, and we ask for peace and, and comfort for them, knowing that uh, simply living on this earth is exactly what they were created to do. So. Uh, we'll pray for all of that. I'm going to use uh, a prayer structure from Nadia Boltzweber. Uh, she's a ELC Lutheran pastor, and uh, she always has just really poetic words to, to uh, help us pray with and, and of course, um, interpret the gospel with. And so I'm, I'm going to read her prayer that she posted this morning uh, online as, uh, as it may comfort us in these times. So pray with me. God who made us all, our healers are exhausted, O oh God. Give rest to those who care for the sick. Our children are bored, O oh God. Grant extra creativity to their caregivers. Our friends are lonely, O oh God. Help us to reach out. Our pastors are doing the best they can, O oh God. Help them to know it is enough. Our workers are jobless, O oh God. Grant us the collective will to take care of them. Our fellow parents are losing their minds, O oh God. Bring unexpected play and joy and dance parties to all in need. Our grocery workers are absorbing everyone's anxiety, O oh God. Protect them from us. Our elderly are even more isolated, O oh God. Comfort them. We haven't done this before and we are scared, O oh God and sometimes we don't even know what else to pray for. We take for granted, O oh God, that you are always listening. May we always take that for granted, for you do listen. And we do pray for all that we've mentioned, for kids and families, for teachers, for those in nursing homes that are isolated, for parents and family who fear because they cannot see and visit them, we pray for those who are struggling with loneliness and fear. We pray for those who feel they are not enough because they're not busy enough or productive enough or successful enough. We pray for those who are reeling from decision fatigue, making so many decisions so quickly. We're tired, oh God. Who knew that we could be this tired without doing that much and so we pray we pray that you are listening that you hear our cries for mercy that our hope lies in you that your love is unfailing and most of all that you are redeeming us all we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior amen have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow God bless